All right, excellent. So we've got 10 minutes, so I'm also going to try and go pretty quickly. Um, my name's Paul Moore, do SC Linux. Um, we do this about once a year, so it seems appropriate that we talk about birthdays from the past year and the ones we've got coming up. Um, SC Linux is turning 18 years old this December, so that's pretty cool. Yeah? What? Almost, not till December. And, and it's what? It's 19 in Canada, right? Ooh, I knew I liked Quebec. <laughs> well, anyway, the good news is, you know, I, I think most of you know SE Linux. It's been around for quite a while, uh, which is a good thing. Hopefully we've shaked out the really bad bugs at this point. Um, it's been part of mainline Linux for, you know, 15 years now, actually over 15 years now. Uh, it's been shipping as part of enterprise Linux distributions for 13. Um, and, you know, we've heard a lot of Android talks the past few years, been part of Android for five years and shipping on, well, at least back in July, you know, approximately 96% of all current Android devices have SE Linux in some shape or form, which I think we heard today, you know, is in the billions, which is pretty impressive when you think about it. I mean, that's not including servers, laptops, computers, all the various other little network devices that may be out there. So it's Pretty significant, I think. But as far as this past year went, um, start off with the kernel changes. Uh, relatively quiet. I think I say that every year, but I actually kind of consider that to be a good thing. Uh, we're rather fully featured at this point. But we did add access controls for eBPF. Um, we also added proper SCTP access controls. We had basic SCTP socket controls before. But now we actually have proper controls, you know, that are specific to all the different SCTP operations and whatnot. We also added SO PeerSec support for sockets that you created with the socket pair system call. Um, SO PeerSec is the underlying uh, capability, well, sorry, um, socket option that's used by Git PeerCon so that you can see the SC Linux label on the other end of the socket connection. As far as user space goes, we added toolchain support for SCTP and InfiniBand objects. Um, InfiniBand we actually added last year. We were just kind of a little slow to get the upstream uh, user space support, but that's in there now. Um, we've also got some smaller incremental changes elsewhere. Uh, some of the bigger ones are changes to SE Manage and SE Module. Um, SE Manage will allow you to see the home directory context now with F context. And you can enable and disable multiple SE Linux policy modules at once using SE Manage. And we've got Python 3 support for the SE Linux GUI uh, command. I, <laughs> I was just talking about this earlier today. I'm, I'm somewhat hesitant to say that everything's now Python 3 supported, but if it's not, we're, we're getting awfully close. Um, so we slowly march away from Python 2 and get Python 3 support. As far as policy goes, I think probably the biggest thing is that the uh, reference policy moved over to the SE Linux project on GitHub. This is kind of nice now because we have one central spot for all of our main SE Linux upstream work, sort of. Um, the kernel development still happens on kernel.org. Uh, the repository is hosted there, but I do maintain a mirror on the GitHub. Um, that's nice because it allows us to use the issue tracking, wiki, and all that stuff. So. Uh, that's kind of a handy thing. Um, reference policy changes. Uh, the other nice thing is if you did any SC Linux policy development in the past, you know we used Git submodules, which were, I think, seemed like a good idea at the time. But if you've done much with Git submodules, you've probably learned to hate them. I know I do. Um, so anyway, uh, when we moved it over to the SC Linux project, we got rid of the submodule and just kind of folded it all in so it's one. One Git module now, so that's good, yay. Um, two reference policy releases this year. Uh, lots of changes, way more than I can get into in you know, the few minutes I've left. Um, but most of it's centered around enablement of you know, newer versions of the software and fixes. And I started doing this last year and I thought it was kind of interesting, so I did it again this year. Uh, these are basically all the kernel changes since September 1st, 2017. So. Hopefully the last year, a little less than that. 
In the kernel, we had 71 change sets that we merged. Um, I mean, you can see the details. We added roughly 3,000 lines and took out, you know, 1,700. And you can kind of see these are the top 10 SC Linux kernel developers over the past year based on lines changed. Um, so Stephen Smalley, I think you guys may know of him. Um, this cheated a little bit, actually. I was, I was kind of surprised at this, but there was a state encapsulation patch. Um, so a lot of this was just kind of some, some rote changes. But anyway, if you see your name on the list, why don't you go ahead and stand up? Come on, don't be shy. Come on, I'm looking at one guy right here. Come on, stand up. Come on, come on. Oh, he's not going to stand up. There we go. There we go. So anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, some audit changes that actually lived in the SC Linux directory. Yeah. Um, so anyway, moving quickly, uh, these are the user space changes. Um, so the one thing that I thought was actually really kind of cool, there's more lines removed than were added, um, which I always like that, whenever, <laughs> at least in the kernel, whenever we have a patch set that actually gets more code out than puts it in, that's always great. So I thought it was impressive over the year that user space actually shrunk a little bit while still adding features. So anyway, if you see your name on the list, stand up. Come on, come on. See, he's doing it quicker now because he knows he's going to get some applause. See, and we, we got some new people here. So round of applause. All right. And last but not least, policy. Where would we be without this? Um, so this is skewed a little bit because what I told you with the submodule stuff, um, that's why you see Chris with, you know, well over, you know, 100,000 lines of uh, code change. So I don't think Chris is here today, is he? Yeah, okay. Um, I was going to say, you can tell them we're, uh, we're calling them out. But uh, anyway, so once again, if you see your name on the list, come on, stand up. Yes, there we go. Well, you know, hey, you got more lines of code change than I did, so that's all right. So anyway, um, I'll just wrap it up by saying thank you to everyone. Uh, for those of you who want to get involved in SC Linux, here's some good places to go. Uh, I would recommend starting off in the GitHub. Like I said, um, everything is consolidated there. We've got the issue trackers for the user space, for the reference policy, the kernel. Uh, you can take a look. There's links to the two mailing lists that we have. The first one is just the general SC Linux developers mailing list. Then there's the reference policy mailing list below that. Um, you know, you saw a couple of people stand up today. If you have any questions, I'm sure you can go talk to them and they would be more than happy to talk to you about it. Um, if all else fails, if you're watching this on YouTube later or if you're too um, shy, you don't want to come up and talk to anybody in person, um, there's my email address, there's my Twitter handle. I'm always more than happy to talk to you guys. So anyway, um, that's it. Unless anybody has any questions, we can try to answer. Yes, yep. Um, the work was originally focused around RDMA, but yeah, there's, uh, there's P key restrictions, there's endpoint restrictions. Um, those are the two ones that come to mind immediately, but um, uh, the guy who did it, uh, Daniel Jurgens, I believe, from Mellanox, wrote a really nice description um, of everything. So if you actually look at the get logs, it's in there. Um, but anyway, I can always talk to you more about it later if you'd like. That's it? All right, well thanks a lot.